half eight on Tuesday morning. It's twenty-five to twenty-five to nine. Mm -hmm. And what's today? Today I'm seeing Vivian Targets for the first time in like two years and five months. So last time I saw a rheumatologist, I was walking and occasionally needing my wheelchair. Mm. Now so, I've got a different wheelchair, so. <laughs> so we're uh, we're off to Stanmore today to uh, go and see Dr. Mattel. So, um, yeah, we've sent him an email with uh, some pre-information. Yeah, just like just the snippets, what we would need out of it, and what the current med list is and um, all that kind of malarkey, all the stuff they usually ask. Mm -hmm. um, so um, our appointment's at half two. So we're slowly getting up because it's going to take a couple of hours to get, get up and get going. Yeah. About 11 o'clock, we're going to head off. We're going to head to Fleet Services to go and get a McDonald's lunch. Yeah. And then trundle into London Ian. Yeah. And then... Uh, and then see if I can get in with you. You should be able to, I should suppose. Be able to, but we'll see. Well, I'll, I'll explain that I get really bad brain fog because mm -hmm. I won't remember what he says because I'm all panicky and nervous already. So, so yeah, so I'm a bit uh, nervous, but it's gonna be. You know, I'm a bit nervous. I'm just I'm quite hopeful to do. So now it's time for a cup of tea. Yeah, and both my mum and dad. Are... I'm going oil because my skin hates me. Oh, there she was. <laughs> Coconut oil in my hair. It's the nature of the gods when you wake up early, I swear to God. <laughs> oh. You should tea. Let's do it then. I'm definitely not nervous. You're nervous. And this is just my groovy walk because I'm a gangster. You're in. I'm in. The crip is loaded. So it's 11 o'clock in the morning. Yep, and all's well. I'm not sweating with nervousness at all. So um, first leg is to Fleet Services to yep. go and get some lunch. And then we'll put um, put the uh, Dubri, uh, oh, do I need my letter? Yeah, I'm going to get my letter in the house because I do that every single time I go to an appointment because apparently I have an issue with letters and hospital appointments. So Nick, bless his little con socks, has just gone and run back to get it. At least I knew where it was. Could have been worse. I'm really nervous though. I'm excited. It's been like two and a half years, two years and five months. Yeah, two years and five months. So it's been a while. So I'm kind of looking forward to it. I, I really hope that I can uh, I can get some answers on what to do because everything seems to have gone a bit wrong for me lately. So wish me luck. Oh, here comes Nick. Superman rescue me yet again. So. We are off to get some uh, diesel before we go to Stanmore. Well, before we go to Fleet Station to get some McDonald's and on the way to Stanmore. So, Mr. Stokes is on a mission while I sit here and supervise. Backseat driver. Except I'm closer and I've got a loud voice so he can't ignore me. Very good vicious velociraptor. <laughs> da, 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 so we've made it to uh, Fleet, 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 Services. Fleet Services. So we're just going to go in for uh, for a bite to eat. This is the long one. I don't know why in my brain, why I think if I lean forward and I drive it will make me go faster, but I do. <laughs> well. I got something. 
Seven up in the subway. Mm-hmm. In the uh, social distancing uh, cafe. <laughs> it's really weird. Turns out I'm a fat bastard. Turns out you're a bit hungrier than you thought, wasn't you? Yeah, I may have not eaten properly yesterday because I was rough, so I, I was a bit hungry, so I, I, I ate it all because I'm a fat bastard. You had that whole foot long. I'm not even ashamed of it. I'm gonna own that shit. Do you know how hard it is for me to eat food? I'm actually proud of that. Is that sad? I didn't even need to make any airplane noises. Just get that out first. So you've just had some lunch. I have indeed. I had a really, really nice subway. Actually, it was very tasty. Chicken tikka and uh, mayonnaise and salad. And you ate the whole foot long? I did actually, I did. I think I needed some energy and plus I didn't want to flake out before I got to the doctors because it's kind of important. So no buggering about today. I'm in full good girl mode. I've even had my inhaler. I'm, I'm on full ball good girl mode today. <laughs> so, uh, it's an exceptional day, darling. You best enjoy it. So we've got about an hour to go now. Um, yep, yeah, about an hour and a half, uh, an hour to go journey-wise, an hour and a half until um, it's time to go to the appointment. So we are not allowed to go there more than 15 minutes before because um, they won't let us in. So it's, it's timing loitering around, but not too long. So um, I, I bought Nick some marzipan because he deserves it because he's been a good boy today. And I bought myself some arrow because I definitely deserve it. <laughs> so we've arrived at, uh, at Stanmore. Yeah. As always, it was not a disappointment. It's uh, it's like a whole logic game, just trying to find parking in hospitals, I swear to God. <laughs> yeah. It's a good job we arrived early, just so that we could drive around aimlessly trying to find a car parking space. Mm -hmm. But we are here now, so yeah. uh, gonna get ready. We've got to head, uh, head, up, head up the hill there. I'm not panicking at all. Mm. Mm. It's getting all hot and tired and my ten chin is tingling. But my mask is cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you know, winning. <laughs> okay, fine. All right, so do you have any deformity? Well, we're back home. He has to sex this stuff in his face with pizza. That's why he sounds like he's um, speaking with a... His fist in his mouth. I am, look. Yeah, oh, 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 a bit of pizza. Well, <laughs> you can see there's some, what's left of it. I haven't even eaten a bit yet. <laughs> <laughs> Nick's inhaled half of the bloody thing. So, yeah, we're back home. I have my priorities focused on something a little more uh, important. Can you tell that my appointment went well? Yeah, I know. It totally looks like I'm being a grown up and I've got tea. <laughs> it's because I'm an oaf and I can't hold a wafer. So, um,. I can't remember her name, Doctor. Doctor, really bad for a dyslexic. I do know her name actually because I googled her. Her name is. I, I like to give her the nickname Doctor Has No Heart. Doctor Bad Bedside Manner. Doctor Do Jusin Novska. Try saying that one three times when you're drunk. Mm. I can't even say it fucking once. But yeah, say Doctor. Doctor Do. Dodge, do, sin, dodge, sin, dodge, sin, Dr. Dovsky, Novska. I totally went, that was right, honest. It was not the most productive of appointments. However, I suppose it was productive in the sense that she's going to refer me for a diagnosis of POTS. So that's good, because, you know, I've been fighting for that one for about four years. However, she also did diagnose me for a condition I already have. And then explained about how it's hypermobility syndrome disease or hypermobility syndrome or hypermobility disease and EDS type 3 and I already knew the difference between them. So she already diagnosed me with something I had which was weird. Um, and then she offered me, they have a three week rehabilitation course uh, in Stanmore. So um, ironically as well, they assess you, I was reading up on this, they assess you as to whether you're going to be in a hotel or the hospital. You have to pay for the hotel. <laughs> There's no choice on which one you get. I'm like, great, so I've just got to be rich and have no fucking life. Great, wonderful, <laughs> brilliant. But yeah, so it's the same course as I did at the Min, basically. Um, uh, she she wants me to um, 
not take opiates because they uh, she, she thinks that's what my GI problems are. I, I disagree, but there you go. Um, I think my GI problems are something else because throwing up and not being able to take my meds makes it makes my throwing up consistent. It doesn't change. So surely if it was my oxy, I'd be throwing up when I take it. And then if I couldn't take it, I wouldn't be throwing up. And I don't have withdrawal symptoms for exactly the same reason. So yeah, she basically said that my only solution for uh, living with this long term is paracetamol and physiotherapy. Which is, I've already been doing all the physiotherapy exercises and have been for fucking years, so um, that's about as useful as chocolate fire guard. Giving me running shoes. And she was kind of, um, she was useless. Like, we pre emailed them and everything with like our symptoms and all the rest of it, and the, what the summary was. We, we emailed the guy. He said he'd received the email and all of that, and she didn't even have it up. She didn't even know what was happening gastro-wise and whether I'd had an well, it wasn't the person we thought we were going to see anyway, was No, it? so I can't help but feel like I got fucking cheated on that one. And do you know what the sad thing is? Wait, two and a half years for that. Two and a half fucking years for that. So I cried a lot on the way home. And I've just spoken to my mommy, which made me feel better, because I am a proper grown-up. Yeah. Well, I am a grown-up, because I can admit that my mum still makes me happy. Nah. But yeah, no, we can't see my mum either. I was crying a little bit because of that. So yeah, we the, the two things I had planned for this year was an air show, not fucking happened, um, and go and see my mum. <laughs> like literally, they're closing, they're going to be stopping anybody from visiting this week. So talk about fucking timing. So I can't help but feel that, um, yeah, not the best day. Eh? So I've decided I'm going to get drunk, which is very easy on my meds. Chin chin. <laughs>